Hi and welcome back to a new video again from Computex 2024. We are here in the Corsair Media Room, which is a little bit more quiet, easier to film, also easier for you to listen. I will still take some detailed shots from the actual uh, showroom they have where they're showing the new products. I will give you mainly an update for the new products that they are showing, also updates that they have from products that they already showed as prototypes back at CES. So we're talking about new case, new fans, updates for an AIO. It's time to experience the epic performance and computing power of Hetzner's dedicated GPU server GEX44. It houses a heavy-duty NVIDIA RTX 4000 SFF ADA generation graphics card with 20GB of GDDR6 ECC GPU memory, which makes it an ideal and affordable option for use of trained AI models. The Intel Core i5-13500 CPU with HT and virtualization also features 6 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores, which makes this server even more special. Two speed 1.92 terabyte generation 3 data center NVMe SSDs plus 64 gigabyte of DDR4 memory complete this powerhouse. Hetzner is well known for their extraordinary price performance ratio and operates several hundred thousands of servers in their own high tech data centers in Germany and Finland, which makes them GDPR compliant. Click on the link below and find out more about Hetzner's dedicated GPU server. I'm starting with the LX fan, and first off, I thought, okay, this just looks like the QX, so what is the difference, asked Corsair. And first of all, if you compare the geometry of the rotor, you will see that the shape is slightly different and also the diameter is slightly increased. So the performance on the LX fan should be slightly better than the QX. If we turn it around, there you can spot the main difference. Backside is different, here is an RGB ring on the QX, on the LX there is no RGB ring. Also the temperature sensor is missing. But the positive side is that the LX fan will be about $10 cheaper because this one was really expensive, so you basically get almost the same look for a much better price. Corsair also highlighted that by the end of the year there also should be a reverse version of this LX fan available. With all the new fans that Corsair is showing, I can tell you I was slightly confused about the naming scheme. So this helped me quite a lot and I also figured out that whenever you pay attention to X, that it tells you that it's a Corsair Link product. For example, these are RX Max RGB. Mainly fans if you want to have a very high airflow, high static pressure performance on a radiator, but at the same time still want to have RGB and also IQ Link. So that would be the perfect choice for this use case. If you want to keep it a little bit simpler, then the RS120 Max would be your choice without Corsair Link, but it still has um, increased height, uh, 30 millimeter fan, and thus more static pressure and also more performance. One of my personal highlights though is this small adapter. That is something that should have been out there already for a longer time. If you used IQ Link before and the IQ system, then you know that it was always not that easy to implement third-party devices. Let's say a Lian Li fan or maybe a Fantex fan or when it has normal RGB, ARGB connector. It's basically an adapter from IQ Link to normal ARGB. That means with this device you can just hook up any other third-party RGB device to your uh, existing IQ Link uh, system. So like a Fantex fan or any other um, ARGB device that is definitely going in the right direction and I hope that Corsair keeps expanding to have more support for other third-party devices. Corsair also shows this new SF1000 watt PSU. So if you're looking for a tiny PSU for a big graphics card such as an RTX 4090, this should definitely work out. They also have a demo system in the other room and there we could see that it definitely works to constantly keep running an RTX 4090 and a high performance CPU with such a very tiny PSU. Part of this AIO we already showed as prototype from CES, at least you might remember the header on top with the fan, so that's for additional VRM cooling. It will also benefit your memory modules that are sitting next to it. There are different pump housings available that are interchangeable and also Corsair wants to keep this system alive for a long time period. So if you decide to buy one of these now, then you might also be able to use this on um, yeah, future AIO, maybe in two or three years. This is also a mid-range IQ Link AIO. You can see that by the IQ Link connector that's on the pump head itself. And if you compare that to the existing IQ Link AIO, you see there's no connector on the radiator. Um, so it will require that you have a cable going from the pump head 
maybe over your motherboard to the back of your system. So you will have one more cable visible than with the existing IQ Link AIO, but it will make the AIO more affordable. There are a few more accessories such as the LS350 and 430 Aurora, which are just RGB strips, updated ones and they have a more uniform lightning effect and also different lengths, so 350 and 430. These we might know from Lian Li. I think I even saw something at Thermaltake, which looks similar. Um, seems like everybody's doing the same thing. It's like the Lian Li streamer, um, just power cable or some shroud attachment for your power cable that adds RGB to it if you want to. Before I forget about it, there are multiple different uh, pump headers you can exchange. Um, this one actually looks quite cool, I think, um, once it's illuminated. There's, of course, also the LCD, that's nothing new. And I would personally probably always go for this one. I think it not only helps with cooling, but it also looks pretty awesome, I have to say, if the fan is rotating. I decided to still go to the showroom, even though the yeah, audio might not be as nice. But that's the only way how I can show you the new 3500X case, also here with the LX fans in the build. It's a panorama case, and I think the most interesting part about the case is also the price point. Without fans, Corsair said they are trying to hit about $90 uh, MSRP, which I think is going to be interesting. It's without fans, but nonetheless, an interesting price point for such a case. There's also the 9000D, which is an update to the 1000D pretty old case and they refreshed it with some very nice updates. For example, the fan mounting was drastically improved back on the 1000D. It was not so easy if you wanted to go from 120 to 140 millimeter fans, you had to buy accessories. So that is now a universal fan mount. Uh, you can adjust it in the position X, Y and then have the fans um, easier in the system. I'm not going to go through all the details of that case mainly because the audio is uh, not that nice and I have to scream a lot, but I just wanted to show you the case. Um, so it's still in my video. So much from Corsair from Computex 2024. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.